Welcome, I am Aideen from PLDA. In this hands-on video, we take a look at the inspector for PCI Express 4.0. The inspector is a PCI 4 enabled desktop computer box with built-in PCI Express monitoring, diagnostic and debug functionality. With this platform, developers of PCI 4 Silicon can check their device interoperability at Gen 4 16 GTS speed. They can get valuable insight on the link-up process and diagnose any bring-up and runtime issues. And because the platform is a standard PC, they can install and run any software to exercise their PCI 4 design at Gen 4 speed and use the inspector's performance measurement feature for real-time throughput analysis. But let's take a closer look. On the outside, Inspector looks like a standard desktop PC. On the front panel, there's a power button. On the lower half of the back panel, the expected set of PC ports, including HDMI, USB, keyboard, mouse and Ethernet ports. At the top, additional ports, including USB and Ethernet, and an on-off switch for the control module, which we will discuss later. In addition, Inspector has a PCI Express by 16 slot for connecting a device to test or DUT, which should be PCI Express endpoint, and a built-in LCD touchscreen for displaying PCI Express link and device information and interacting with the DUT. Inside the box, you have a commercial PCI 3 Mini ITX motherboard with an Intel Core i3 CPU and a 64G SSD. You also have a PLDA-developed PCI Express switch adapter card that connects on the upstream side to the motherboard with 8 lanes at Gen 3 speed and connects on the downstream side to the by 16 connector with 4 lanes at Gen 4 speed. The switch design is fully transparent and includes the logic necessary for traffic monitoring, link diagnostics and interacting with the DUT through the switch downstream port. This information is captured, processed and rendered on the LCD touchscreen using a dedicated control module that operates independently from the PC. Let's see the inspector in action. We'll be testing two add-in cards, a commercial PCI Express SSD supporting four lanes at Gen 3 speed and an internal endpoint reference design running on an FPGA development board supporting four lanes at Gen 4 speed. Let's plug in the PCIe 3.0 SSD and turn the power on to the inspector. While the PC is booting, let's look at the features available through the LCD touchscreen. At the top of the screen, we have five tabs to access different information panels. At the bottom of the screen, a permanent banner displays the current LTSSM state, the configured link width, the negotiated link speed and a dump button. Pressing the dump button at any time on any of the screens will copy the entire diagnostic data onto an inserted USB stick in HTML format. The default startup screen is the link status screen. Detected lanes indicates if a receiver was detected for lane 7 to lane 0 reading from left to right. A green plus sign indicates the lane was detected, while a red minus sign indicates the lane was not detected or that the lane is not physically connected. In this particular case, we see that lanes 3, 2, 1 and 0 are detected, which is expected. Similarly, active lanes reports which lanes are part of the active link. In this case, lanes 3, 2, 1 and 0 participate in the active link. Lane polarity indicates if a particular lane polarity was reversed, with a capital R if reversed and a 0 if not reversed. Max payload is the system assigned maximum payload size. On this system it is set to 256 bytes. ASPM L0S provides low power status information for the receiver. If ASPM RX L0S is active, RX will be displayed in uppercase. Note that for the transmit side, if ASPM TX L0S is active, it will be reflected by the LTSSM state with L0 plus TX L0S. Entries in recovery 
counts the number of times LTSSM transitioned from L0 to the recovery state, including when this occurred during speed changes. This information can be used to assess link stability. Framing errors counts the number of framing errors detected in the data stream at Gen 3 speed and Gen 4 speed. In normal conditions, we expect this counter to remain at zero. Encoding disparity errors counts the number of 8B, 10B encoding and disparity errors encountered. The number of 128B, 130B encoding errors encountered and the number of malformed skip ordered sets encountered. We also expect this counter to stay at zero in normal conditions. Pressing the reset button resets all three counters. Clicking the throughput tab brings up the throughput information screen. This page provides real-time link throughput for TLPs going from the host to the DUT in the top half and from the DUT to the host in the bottom half. The first three lines in each section indicate the instantaneous throughput for memory read, memory write and completion TLPs in either direction. Total provides the instantaneous aggregate throughput for all TLPs and peak indicates the maximum throughput observed. Pressing reset will clear the peak information. Note that all the throughput figures reported on this page include TLP headers, payload and ECRC if present. In our case, all values are flat because we are not generating any traffic upstream or downstream. But we can run the Crystal Diskmark Benchwork software that we previously installed on the Inspector hard drive to generate traffic to our SSD card. The throughput screen now populates with actual throughput data. Moving on to the LTSSM log page. This screen reports the last 40 states of the LTSSM of the Inspector Switch downstream port, which provides the best possible indication of the DUT's LTSSM transitions. Different colors are used to differentiate the different link speed sections. The screen labeled Equalization provides information about the equalization process. HGT equalization and 16GT equalization indicate if equalization at Gen 3 speed and Gen 4 speed was completed and which of the three phases was completed. A green plus sign indicates successful completion, while a red minus sign indicates a phase was not run or was run but failed. The local HGT and local 16GT indicate the preset or coefficients accepted at the end of the HGT and 16GT equalization process by the inspector. Similarly, the remote HGT and remote 16GT indicate the preset or coefficients accepted at the end of the HGT and 16GT equalization process by the DUT. When coefficients are shown, they appear between braces and represent, from left to right, post cursor C plus 1, cursor C0 and precursor C minus 1. The screen labeled special enables specific interactions with the DUT. Force receiver detection on all lanes is disabled by default, indicating inspector performs normal receiver detection. If we enable this option, inspector does not perform receiver detection and assumes there is a receiver on each implemented lane. This feature can be useful for bypassing receiver detection in case of issues with the DUT receiver detection circuitry. Note that this setting is only triggered in the LTSSM detect state, which usually occurs at power up or on system restart. Disable low power negotiation, which is enabled by default, instructs inspector to disable entry in ASPM TXL0S, ASPM L1 and L1 low power states. Enabling this setting can help diagnose DUT issues related to low power entry or exit. Loopback master, which is disabled by default, instructs inspector to act as a loopback master and directs the DUT into loopback when the LTSSM config or recovery state is reached, whichever comes first. 
Inspector does not, however, transmit a specific pattern and does not check what the DUT transmits either. The target link speed option, which defaults to 16 GTS, sets the maximum link speed that is supported by the inspector. It can be used to cap link speeds at 2.5, 5.0 or 8.0 GTS. A change to this setting takes effect on the next link training or retraining, which can be forced by pressing the Retrain Link button. Note that the link can only be forced to retrain if the LTSSM is in L0 or L0S state. The Maximum Link Width option, which defaults to by 8, sets the maximum link width that is supported by the inspector. It can be used to cap link widths to by 1, by 2 or by 4. A change to this setting takes effect after a reset, which can be triggered by a variety of events – power up or platform reset, or exit from the disabled state. This can be forced by turning the disable link option on, then back off. Note that the link can only be disabled, meaning both link partners, DUT and Inspector, transition to the disabled state if the LTSSM is in L0 or L0S state. Setting Disable Link back off will trigger a link reset and link retraining. We will experiment with the maximum link width and target link speed options later on when we test our Gen 4 endpoint DUT. The About screen provides version information for both the control module software and the FPGA switch design firmware. Always make sure that you have the latest software and firmware revisions from PLDA as we keep adding new capabilities to the inspector. Now let's shut down the inspector and replace our Gen 3 SSD with our Gen 4 endpoint reference design. Let's restart inspector. Immediately we can see that LTSSM is in the L0 state with four lanes at 16 GTS Gen 4 speed. Looking at the link screen, we have four lanes detected and active. The number of entries in recovery is now two, as expected due to the speed change from Gen 1 to Gen 3 and Gen 3 to Gen 4. Looking at the LTSSM log, we see all corresponding LTSSM transitions. On the equalization screen, we see that both Gen 3 and Gen 4 speed equalization completed successfully. Now let's generate traffic across the link between Inspector and DUT. We have a specific device driver and application software for our endpoint installed on the Inspector hard drive so we can run the software and generate some DMA traffic. On the throughput screen we can see performance data. The values are slightly higher than on our test software because the test software only accounts for the payload in the measurement of throughput. Let's stop the traffic. Now on the special screen, we can change maximum link speed to 2.5 GT and hit retrain link. The link is retrained to Gen 1 speed and it immediately reflects on the bottom banner. If we take a look at the LTSSM tab, we can see that the link has been retrained in Gen 1. Let's go now to an 8 GT Gen 3 link. Once again, the link speed change is visible on the lower banner and we can observe on the LTSSM log the whole retraining sequence to Gen 3. Similarly, we can change the maximum link width to two lanes and set disable link on, then back to off. As expected, the link is reset and retrained and is now established in by 2 at Gen 3 speed. At this stage, we need to reboot the PC to reallocate PCI Express resources. As the PC boots up, the live training sequence is shown on the lower banner. Once boot is complete, we can view the LTSSM log page again to check that the entire training sequence to Gen 3 L0 has been performed. 
We can now run our test software again and see the effect on data throughput, which is roughly divided by 4 since we went from 4 lanes at 16 GTS to 2 lanes at 8 GTS, as is to be expected. Of course, you can install and run any software on the inspector. Actually, Inspector is shipped with a free PCI utility software that allows users to scan, decode, display and write to the PCI Express configuration space registers. Also note that you can wipe out the Inspector's hard drive and install your own operating system. PLDA's transparent switch adapter is operating system agnostic and the control module operates independently. This was a quick tour of PLDA's Inspector for PCI Express 4.0. Inspector is an inexpensive way to test and exercise your PCI Express designs at Gen 4 speed in a commodity Intel-based platform. And to get first-hand insight into potential link issues or device issues without needing expensive equipment and the expertise it requires. For additional information, contact us at info at pldacom or visit us online at www.pldea.com. Thank you for watching.